Hey everybody, this is Senior Pastor Scott Archdeacon. We are now in week four of our Walking with God Challenge. And I hope you are doing well. And I hope you're imparting that faith on the next generation, regardless of the age of that next generation as we go through. I have heard some wonderful things from different people in the congregation that have been using this and being able to have some of these conversations and things like that. And so that is wonderful. That is what we need to be doing. Now today, Associate Pastor Scott over there, he is going to talk to you about the Bible. He's going to talk to you about some of those Bible stories and things like that. And so I just wanted to share with you one of my favorite stories. I love the story found in Judges chapter 3 where there's this guy named Ehud. And Ehud is the judge. And Ehud ha takes this knife, uh, knife and he goes and he assassinates this leader that's been oppressing the people. And he shoves it into it. And this king, he was so fat that the fat wraps around the knife and actually gets the knife lost inside his gut. Oh my goodness, that was cool. What about you? What's your favorite story? <laughs> the story of Ehud, really? That's, what, that's the one you wanted to bring up of all the stories. <laughs> all right. Well, I am Associate Pastor Scott. It's wonderful to have you here for week four of the Walking with God Challenge. We certainly are praying for you as you are going through the steps of talking about your faith to that next generation. And Senior Pastor's right. We wanted to talk a little bit today about Scripture because our faith cannot be separated from Scripture. We can talk about them, but we can't truly separate them. Because... Our faith is based not just on God, but what we know of God through Scripture and the redemptive path it took. And so I do. I want you to think of what, one of those big Bible stories that you cherished as a child. Or perhaps has helped you through a hard time as an adult. Or maybe you came to the faith late and you want to talk about a Bible story that really impacted your life. You know, there's so many great uh, stories and people in the Bible that these stories are just etched in our brains like Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. We have just so many of them. King David is full of stories. We have Samson, you know, that hippie with the long hair that uh, had, he was really strong. I mean, so many stories. And oftentimes they don't get talked about as much, but we also have the women of faith as well. If you're talking with a young uh, girl, Perhaps this is one of the stories you want to talk to them about. I know with Alexa, she's so excited that there is a female vice president. That's not about politics. That's the fact that there is a female vice president. She's just so excited about that. And uh, anyways, so maybe for that, we, for somebody, we want to talk about the story of Esther or Ruth, or perhaps in the book of Judges we want to talk about Deborah, or Mary uh, Magdalene, or Mary and Martha, or Mary the mother of Jesus. Lots of Marys, huh? But maybe even Elizabeth, or Hannah. So many women of the faith, not just men. And so that's what really I want you to do today, this week. That's the challenge. Talk about your favorite Bible story. Ask the next generation, well, what Bible stories have you heard? Or what's your favorite? Or how has that impacted your life? And make sure you look in the description section of the video here. We have other uh, thought-provoking ideas and discussion questions, things like that to get you thinking. But that's really what I want us to be uh, talking about. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is because I want to talk to you again about Timothy. If you were here uh, week one, 
you heard a little bit about Timothy's faith story. If you weren't here on week one, I'm not sure how you got to week four. But if you're Remember way back to week one, we talked about Timothy and how his grandma Lois passed the faith on to his mom Eunice, and Eunice passed the faith on to Timothy. And Timothy partners with Paul, and Paul helps him along the way as well. So it's not just family, it's community as well that's building that faith. But I want us to get to 2 Timothy 3, and we read actually a portion of this in week 1, but we're going to read a portion that we really didn't read last time. We're going to read verses 14 through 17, and it says this, But as for you, continue on what you have learned and have been convinced of, because you know those things whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so we have these amazing Bible stories. Maybe it's Jesus feeding the 5,000, I don't know. But we have these amazing Bible stories in Scripture. But what's Scripture for? What's the purpose of Scripture? Well, it's to equip us for every good work. That's the main crux of what Scripture is based on this passage we looked at. But it does some other things to get us to equipping us. It teaches us and it rebukes us when we're doing something wrong. It slaps our hand. It's correcting us. It's getting us on the path we need to be on. It's training us in righteousness to where we recognize right from wrong. And that's how it equips us. And so scripture is so important. That's why I wanted you to think of uh, events in your life where a Bible story has actually helped you uh, through. You've been going through a hard time and you go, oh, but I remember this man named Job. Or something like that. Where a Bible story that you have known your whole life since your infancy is... Paul talks to Timothy. This Bible story you've known your whole life, you get into a different situation, and yet that story resonates with you and helps you through that. Because we need to make sure that next generation knows our faith is not uh, distinct, uh, separated from Scripture. Scripture informs our faith. And Scripture is actually even hard to understand sometimes. And that's something you're okay to talk about too. Where you read a passage and you're like, I just don't understand. Well, guess what? The Apostle Peter knew that. Because talking about Paul, Peter in his letter, again the scripture references below in the description section, but Peter even says, our dear brother Paul, he writes some hard things that are hard to understand. And so we recognize that sometimes reading scripture, it's going to take some digging. It's going to take some soul searching to truly understand what's going on and how that applies to your life. I mean, there's so many stories that are hard. And so maybe you, that next generation struggling with some of those passages. It's okay to struggle with them. And maybe you can open up, up about some of your struggles with certain passages. And uh, oftentimes this is where something along social issues might come up. Well, they talk about slavery in the Bible and they don't denounce it. They denounce homosexuality. They denounce abortion. But society says those things are okay. And and so we can wrestle with those. We just also have to realize that if Scripture is clear on a topic, that's ultimately the end of the moral argument. And so I wanted to 
uh, let you know it's okay to struggle with those things. There are some things that are hard to understand. Sometimes that's because it's culturally influenced and sometimes it's because we don't have a deep enough understanding of the scripture itself. And so that could be something you talk about as well. Maybe someone's struggling with the idea of, well, why does the church want me to give money every week? Trust me, that's a struggle some, with some people. I don't know where it's going. I have my own needs going on right now. And so those are things that we can struggle with and we can talk about that in light of Scripture because our faith is not separate, separated, segregated from Scripture. They are intertwined together. And so again, spend a few minutes in that description section this week, 10 minutes in the description section, and then go talk to that next generation about your favorite Bible stories and how Scripture has influenced your life. When things are going good, how Scripture has influenced it. And when things are going bad, how Scripture has influenced it. When you were confused about a topic, how Scripture influenced it. Let's have that conversation. Because obviously Timothy had that growing up, not just with his mom and grandma, but with the Apostle Paul as well. And so we want to ingrain in that next generation that we truly know that Scripture is a vital part of our faith. I'm going to be praying for you this week, and I've been in encouraged by listening to how people have used this video and some of the discussions they've been having. And if you have a success story or even a failure story of having one of these conversations, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you about that. And I do pray this finds you well. I will see you week five next week.